Hello there. So Tory rebels have been warned off of plotting against Boris for the good of the nation. I've heard it all now. Rebel Tory MPs have been told not to try and oust Boris from number 10, with the reason being given that to do so would be bad for the nation. What they're actually being told to do is put up with Boris for the greater good, that well-known hard-left socialist concept that never seems to end up doing anything for the greater good, only lining the pockets of the few. You would think that Boris had plummeted to the bottom of the Conservative Home Cabinet ratings popularity list or something. Oh, he has. Well, that goes some way to explaining the warning. And how can it be for the greater good if we've got a Prime Minister who is dead set against doing what he put in his manifesto? Borrowing, taxing and spending to the hilt, but at the same time trashing the NHS putting a trade border down the Irish Sea, cutting Northern Ireland off from the rest of the UK, while turning the police into a woke social service and our armed forces are advertising for snowflakes to fill their ranks, while many in the civil service pretend to work from home. But this warning not to get rid of the Prime Minister does make you wonder how many letters of no confidence now sit in the safe of the 1922 committee chairman, Sir Graham Brady. Now, the Northern Ireland Secretary, Brandon Lewis, said that he didn't think there were enough rebels to trigger a Tory MP vote of no confidence in their leader. And he also said he didn't think it would be in the interests of either the country or of the Tory party itself to do so. Now, the one thing that does bother me about a Boris removal is who would replace him? And would that newcomer sign us back into the EU single market? And when there's one previous leadership hopeful in the form of Remainer Jeremy Hunt sniffing about, then those fears are well-founded. And he could well be a stalking horse for a far worse contender because the one that first wields the political knife almost never wins through in the end. But when the Boris support is based on for the good of the party and for the greater good of the country, it makes it sound as if they're now devoid of any real fresh ideas. Anyway, everything could change on the morning of the 24th of June, the day after the two by-elections in Wakefield and Tiverton and Honiton have been decided. In the meantime, he could get started on realigning himself and his party with the concepts of conservatism and unionism by ditching the worst bits, or better still, all of the Northern Ireland Protocol. But I won't be holding my breath. <laughs>